Listen, I want to just take a moment and look at Acts, the second chapter, as we prepare to celebrate Pentecost. And the minute reads these words, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, I want to just talk about that. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, I want to talk about it's about time. It's about time. Uh, It's about time. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, um, these words, it's about time, we often use after we have waited for something for quite some time. And um, when you have been in anticipation for something and something finally arrives, the words that we often use are merely, it's about time. And can I tell you, that as we anticipate Pentecost, um, there is an expectation that we can have when you understand what Pentecost is all about. Pentecost is so significant for the body of Christ because it is a it's about an opportunity for us to experience renewal. I found out that you can go through life and miss cycles and miss the place of renewal and often forget what God has done. Every now and then You have to go renew your license for those who are in authority or for those who administrate license to know that you know what it is that you're doing, that renewals happen to recertify to reestablish, to reinstitute what already has occurred. And Pentecost comes as a renewal of, of endowment, yes, Lord, of what we need to sustain as we move forward. That's why I love this time of year. And I put special emphasis on Pentecost because for so long the church has just looked over this time of year. We get past Easter and we start looking for Mother's Day and then we start looking for, for Father's Day. And, yes, we're going to talk about Mother's Day on tomorrow. But I want to set you up for Mother's Day because you cannot celebrate Mother's Day until you celebrate power. Until you understand that God gives renewal beyond a Mother's Day and a Father's Day. He moves us to a place of renewal, reestablishment. Reinstitution. Listen. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the reason that I want to talk about this is because Pentecost is about the restoration of of articulation. The word... Feast in the Hebrew, uh, it means a divinely appointed time. 
Pentecost in the Old Testament was a feast. And in the Hebrew, it means a divinely appointed time. And 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 the the festival, it was a festival that they had is in verb form meaning to dance. So then now in the Old Testament, up until now, there were 1,400 Pentecost that had occurred. They were festivals of dancing. Now, here's the deal. But in the New Testament, God is not interested in feet dancing, but in tongues dancing. It's a movement of the tongue. He's moving in on the tongue for the tongue to articulate something different. What I'm trying to tell you is Pentecost comes to change your speech because the problem the problem with the body of Christ is that it could be that our faith is not right because our speech is not right. Then we just I, I just gotta hang out here for a second. That our 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 results are not right because our prayers are not right. Our outcome is not right because the way we go in it is not right. And much of that is how we articulate and how we speak because out of the tongue comes life or death. That you have to be mindful of the words that you use even when you talk about yourself. You have to be mindful of the words in which you remind yourself and put in your mind and in your spirit because some of us are so critical of ourselves that we we speak words of doubt and we speak words that that don't build ourselves up. We speak words that are so negative that you depress yourself. But when you shift your language and you begin to declare that I am a citizen of the kingdom, I am the Lord's child, I can decree a thing that it shall be even though it is not at present time. When you start shifting your language and you declare that even if you don't have a mother, He said he will be a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless. When you start shifting your language, you will realize that God is everything you need him to be, but it starts in how you articulate and how you speak. Pentecost comes to renew your speech. One of the worst things you can do Be careful what you say to yourself when you are by yourself about yourself. Because that will determine what yourself is able to accomplish. Speak over yourself. Decree healing over yourself. Decree wholeness over yourself. Decree blessings over yourself. Decree blessings over yourself. Decree protection over yourself. And not over you, not only you, but over your whole family. Change your speech. And you can change your outcome. Listen, listen, change your speech, and you can even change your financial destiny. How is that? Well, you speaking is not just going to put money in your hand, 
But what it would do, it would change your attitude on how to obtain it or how to manage it. Speak over yourself. Pentecost comes for restoration of speech. Y'all, y'all, listen, I'm already out of time. I'm just getting started. Good God Almighty. Listen, but then Pentecost comes. I'm almost done. Just stay with me for about two minutes, two more minutes longer. To add super to the natural. That's right. Pentecost comes to add super to the natural. When, when I was growing up, there were two realities that did this for me. One was um, um, Superman was big back in this day. And um, Superman would transform from Clark Kent to Superman, but he had to do it in a phone booth. And with my infantile understanding, I thought that the phone booth had a certain kind of channeling of power. Um, I remember as a child uh, thinking that the phone booth was a powerful place. Just because Superman could go in it and come out transformed. It, 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 don't ever forget that Superman transformed in a phone booth. I, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but that's somebody that's in a tight situation. There's somebody who is in a in a closed-off situation, there's somebody who ain't got much room to move. But don't forget, Superman changed his clothes in the phone booth. And and there are times when you don't have to have a whole lot of room to make transition. You ain't got to have a whole lot of resources to make some stuff happen. You, you ain't got to have a whole lot of space to make the moves you got to make. All you got to do is get in the space that you need to get in, and sometimes that space is right there in your house. It ain't at the church. Because you can't get to the church right now. We'll be there soon, but not right now. It's not necessarily at another building. It's not necessarily at another location. But sometimes your own house got to be your phone booth. But the transformation is, it, it, I, I later learned that the power is not in the phone booth. That any transformation that happens, it comes by the authority and the power of God himself. And Pentecost comes. I got to let y'all go. Shit, I'm already out of time. Pentecost come to remind you that God is still putting super on natural. You better be glad about that. You better be glad about that because there ain't much you can do in the natural. There's not much strength you can have in the natural. Listen, tomorrow there are going to be many people who are saddened because their mothers are not here. And it's natural to feel that way. Listen, don't let nobody tell you not to feel bad and not to cry because your mother's not here or because mother is going on. Don't don't listen. Don't let people tell you not to cry. That's your mother. That was your love. That's your heart. But I'm going to tell you something. Tonight, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray because in the natural, you can't stand it. But in the supernatural, weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In the supernatural, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. In the supernatural, God is making transformation that for every tear that you drop, 
He's going to exchange it for a garment of praise in the supernatural. God is raising up a new, a new testimony, a new glory in you.